All right, I uh, I heard from a number of listeners, emails, and a caller that came in saying uh, versions of I'm angry at Quan LX. Why is he saying what he's saying? Uh, a caller called in, Nancy from Cyprus, and said, you've had Quan LX on your show, and uh, you've said that you can disagree with him, but he generally takes a stand based on a principled issue. And even when you disagree with him, it's because he truly believes that what he's saying is is the truth and he's done his investigation. Nancy made the comment that I heard from a number of people that said they feel like he's on the wrong side of this issue. I said, I'll text him. He's never not come on when I've asked him. And today is no different. Quan Alex, thanks for being with us. Michael, thank you for having me. Good afternoon. All right. L- let me first confess that I don't know a lot about this case. But uh, it's been covered pretty widely, the, the Cleveland case. Tell me if you would, in your words, first of all, what you believed, what you believe happened, and then why you got involved. One, I was asked for several weeks to get involved in what was going on in Cleveland, Texas, with a large number of African American young boys and several men that had been arrested with the allegations of raping a young 11 year old Hispanic girl. And for several weeks, I never touched it, but I did send down one of my investigators and asked him to gather as much information as possible and to report back to me. When he brought back certain information to me, then I decided to look into it myself. And that's when I began to speak with several of the young men that had already been charged and one that had a warrant for his arrest that had not been charged. My conversation with one particular gentleman in particular was an older brother. I think he was about 22 years old. And I asked him, I said, be honest with me. Did you have sex with that young girl? And he said, yes, I did. I said, were you in the trailer home? He said, yes, I was. He says, I was wrong. I made an awful, awful bad decision. I know I have to pay for that. But yes, I was there. He said, but there are three other young boys that they have arrested that was not in that mobile home with me. He said, I'll take my punishment, and I'll name those who was there in there with me. But three of those young boys were not in there. And so I began to speak to some of the other young boys who I had a chance to speak with who had been charged and arrested. And two of the young boys had a solid alibi for the two days that they were accused of being in that mobile home. We checked into the alibi. The alibi was real. They were not even in Cleveland. So I began to speak with investigators. And this is what disturbs me about the investigation. One, they do not have DNA on all of these quote-unquote young men who have been charged. Two, they only have maybe four or five on the video that was taken by one of the young men in particular who was involved who took the cell phone video and recorded the sex acts with that young child. Subsequently after that, All of these other names start popping up, and these young men start being arrested. So I asked him, what physical evidence do you have to tie them to the scene? He said, well, some of the other young men said such and such was there, and this person was there, and the young girl was able to pick through a yearbook that was given to her from a junior high school and the high school of who all was involved. And so then I asked him, I said, well, wait a minute. Did you get a chance to look at her Facebook page? Because I have, Michael. And when I looked at her Facebook page, I was so shocked and appalled by what I saw. I asked for others to examine the Facebook page also. What was shocking about it? There were postings on the Facebook page of this young girl well over a year ago. She posted pictures of her in sexually provocative positions in lingerie and was placing these pictures on the internet. And then also she was describing her sexual relationships with men on Facebook. And I'm like, my God, this is well over a year ago. Where was the police when her mother, and we found that her mother did report it to CPS, in particular the school, and law enforcement, and law enforcement said unless we had proof that she was actually doing those things, something with physical evidence, we can't do anything. Well, come to find out, Michael, this young girl was posting these sexual relationships on Facebook well 
over a year ago. Okay, but let, so let, let me interrupt you, Quinn. First so of all, you, you know that an 11-year-old cannot give consent to a sexual act, even if the 11-year-old looks 25, even if she wants to. She cannot legally give consent. That's statutory rape, pure and simple. And I totally agree with you. And on last night, my exact words were, an 11-year-old cannot give consent. So whether she consented or not, it was still wrong. And my exact words last night was that every brother that slept with that young girl that knew better and was too old, they should be locked up and they should go to prison. But then I also said that if the investigation is to be thorough and adequate, where was her mother when all of these sexual encounters were taking place with those young men in the African-American community? This did not happen over just a simple Thanksgiving holiday weekend. She had been going back and forth with members of the community for four months, from September to December. And then I asked the members of the black community, how could you all not see this young girl going back and forth? How could this be happening right under your nose and you not know anything? It's because you have not been watching the children of your community and you have not been paying attention to what's happening in your neighborhoods. I said, but law enforcement must go and find every adult man that was on Facebook with this little girl and bring them in for questioning, investigate them, and indict and arrest everybody that was involved with a sexual relationship with this child. Okay, with so let me, let me make sure boys, I understand your position. With three, of them, with three of them that's in jail, I believe, I believe there's substantial proof to prove they never touched that girl and they were never in that mobile home. Okay, so your position is not... So, so you, let me make sure I understand your position. You're saying, yes, what was done was wrong, and anybody who can who it can be proved had sex with an 11 year old, and they are not within two years of her age, they should be prosecuted to the fullest extent of the law. And I'm not blaming her. I'm not saying she asked for it. I'm not saying she deserved it. I'm not saying it's what she wanted. You're saying that for that group of people first, they should be dealt with to the fullest extent of the law. That's exactly my words last night. In fact, if you go on the Cleveland newspaper, you'll see it in detail in the video. That's exactly what I said last night. And all I said was, don't limit your investigation just to the African-American community. When there's obviously proof that she had on Facebook of sexual relationships with other older men who were not African-American, and everybody who slept with that child, regardless of what their race is in Cleveland, Texas, should be indicted, arrested, and charged. But just just don't make an s- exclusive investigation into the African-American community when obviously you know there's much more to this investigation and it should be broader. That's exactly what I said. But your your reason for being involved, because I you and I have had conversations off air about different cases that, that I've asked for your opinion on or that we've just talked about that you did not get involved in. Your reason to get involved was what? what what is the injustice that you are concerned about? Because I do believe that three of the young men that have been arrested and charged had nothing to do with it. And I believe their name was thrown in a hat, as many other names were thrown into this hat. In fact, they're saying now they don't even know how high the arrest number will go. And my concern is if you have just one young man in jail charged with raping a child that did not do it, that one young man is worth fighting for, and that one young man is worth us questioning the investigation to make sure that it's thorough and that it's adequate and that it's fair and true. I agree with that, and, and that's the only way the system can work. But what makes you so certain that these individuals are innocent, and why do you think they were arrested if not, if every defendant is black? Let me tell you what I do know. One, I don't believe everyone is innocent. And last night I said this, I believe that some of those young men are absolutely guilty. In fact, two of them told me they were guilty. I said that on last night. I said they should be punished. I said, but I know three of those young men who we have confirmed where they were, who we have confirmed are not on that videotape that was taken, who we have confirmed there was no DNA, no physical evidence, and who we have confirmed that they were picked out of a yearbook. I'm standing for those three young brothers. Let me ask you this, because a number of people inside law enforcement and out have sent this to me. I don't. I think you made a statement, as we are all want to do. I'm going to give you an opportunity to, to say either I stand by this or I don't. 
But uh, he, here's an example. An individual in Dayton writes, Michael, um, your friend Quan LX last night said that the Cleveland Police Department investigation was being run by the KKK. Does that comment also include the black officers that are working on this case? The reason the perps that were rounded up were all black is that they were ratted out by one another. It is not in his best interest to criticize law enforcement using these types of terms. This is what I said. And I spoke those words because I know that the lead investigators, the two lead investigators are not African-American. You have a few other, you have one African-American male in particular who's been assisting, but he's not the lead investigator. It's two Caucasian officers who are. Secondly, before I came to Cleveland, Texas, law enforcement called me and cautioned me about coming to town. They said because racial strife is running high against African-Americans by the Hispanic community and many in the white community. And I know Cleveland, Texas, to be the headquarters of the local chapter of the Ku Klux Klan. And so what I said was that because this investigation has exclusively been in the African-American community, when there's absolutely enough evidence to show that it should be broader and not just to one community, it appears to me that the KKK is leading the investigation. That's what I said. But you don't really believe that. I believe that the Ku Klux Klan is active, has a strong chapter in law, I mean, in particular in Cleveland, Texas, and I believe that many in law enforcement have that mindset. Now, whether they're official members, no, I don't believe that. But do they have that attitude and mindset when it comes to really going after African-American men, especially in these southern Texas and southern towns? Absolutely, I do that they have some biases based on color. I do believe that. Hmm. So what do you think should be done? This is what I believe, and, I, and, and I've said this last night. That's why if you get the whole speech of last night, I believe that every individual, I don't care what his color is, should absolutely be sought out and found if he was involved with this child, be arrested and indicted and punished. I believe the mother has to answer some tough questions as well as the father. How could you not know that your 11-year-old child was going to one particular community she doesn't even live in for four months, almost four months, having sex with grown men. How could you say to the Associated Press, the mother, that she knew her child was sexually active with older men and older boys and an emergency outcry not be made to CPS to take my child into custody or put your child in some type of supervised, some type of supervised surrounding to where your child would be kept safe? And, in fact, why did the school, and the mother said this, that the school never told her that her child was skipping school for a number of days in a row the way that she was involved with these men. Everybody dropped the ball and failed that particular child, and everybody who failed that child should be held accountable. That's what I believe. How does this happen? How does it happen that this many young men engage? I mean, we know that in any group, people will watch a situation occur, and because of, of groupthink, especially young men in a sexual environment like this, a case after case after case where these things can happen. But how does it happen that none of them goes to their pastor, a family member, a friend, a teacher? How does this happen? over this period of time? Once again, the same thing I said last night. And I said this harshly last night. I criticized my own brothers and sisters in Cleveland, Texas, for not being on their posts, that our elders, that our mothers and fathers, our pastors, our community leaders, our elected officials in the black community in Cleveland have failed our young people. Because how could a video be floating around like that for weeks and yet the parents not have any idea that this type of material is in their children's cell phones. How could they not even know that this video was even being put on Facebook and your child has a Facebook page and a cell phone that you pay for and you not know what the content is inside that phone? 
It happens because in our community, too many of our elders are afraid of the very young children that we have produced. And too many of the older brothers and sisters who have nothing to do but sit on the corner and waste time are not standing up saying to the young boy who's hanging around the corner, get off this corner and go home. Even though you've made some mistakes, you've made some failures that keeps you on that corner because of bad choices, you don't let a young boy who still has a chance life and success to hang out on that corner with you. You should do more to help the young brothers in our community. And because we have not produced constructive programs to engage them and to that we keep those programs alive. That's what I said. And I said it very sternly to my own people. But this morning and today, nobody's calling me anti-black. I think that's true. Uh, I, I, I wish that message would get out more because I Sadly, this is probably not, I have no reason to believe, but it's probably not an isolated case. And it's probably not just young Hispanic girls that are doing this, probably young black and, and white girls and, and loads of other things. And this was probably discussed openly at school. I'm sure the boys were all talking about it. I mean, we've all been young boys and we've all, we've seen how groupthink can play out. L let me ask you this, going on this last question. You made a reference at the beginning to the fact that the two white officers on on the case were white officers. As a principle, do you believe that a white officer is incapable of investigating a case like this and that if there is a black officer, that person needs to replace the white officer because of the racial overtones? No, I don't believe that at all. In fact, I am friends with some very intelligent and very excellent white detectives and officers who've done a great job. In fact, I have worked with them on cases in the past, and they have been absolutely wonderful. I don't believe anything like that, but I do believe this, that when an investigation warrants and the information is there at your disposal, you should investigate it to the ends of the earth if you have to, to make sure that justice is done, that innocent people are not charged for things that they did not do, and that those who are guilty do not get away. And I don't care what your color is, because there are some bad black cops, and I don't stand with them. To me, it's not about your color as a detective or an investigator. It's about your integrity, and it's about you doing that which you know to be fair, without bias, without classism, sexism, or racism attached to your investigation. Do it based on the truth. And I don't care what your colleagues as an investigator. If you do that, I tip my hat to you. Well, let me leave you with this, and this is unrelated to those cases. You have taken to wearing sort of cream or off-white suits, and I do not think that suits you. I don't, I don't think that's your color. Well, Michael, I think that you may be a little colorblind <laughs> and that you're not taking the suits correctly. <laughs> no, I think you look better. I, I'm looking at last night, and I'm okay with that one. But I think you look better in, in darker colors, blacks and, and browns and, and deep blues. But I saw you a couple of weeks ago, and, and it was like a, a cream from, from the 70s. And it was, it, I, I about texted you right there on the spot, but I was falling asleep. Michael, I'm trying to get you to change some of the colors that you wear, <laughs> that you may have a little more savor to the flavor of your You know wardrobe, what? You've so. seen me in my swimsuit. Let's not, let's not continue this conversation because yeah, it, right. it only goes downhill. Gwen Alex, thanks for being our guest, and thanks for calling in on short notice. Thank you for having me, sir. All right.